As a college student, I was a little abnormal. During my first semester, I took some classes that raised questions which my nominal Catholic faith ju just couldn't withstand. It pretty much shattered, dissolved right in front of me. So I went on this quest for truth. I, I, I became passionately focused on finding answers to life's ultimate questions. <laughs> Meanwhile, my friends, like normal college students, were much more focused on where the next party was. During the height of this quest, I took my Introduction to Philosophy class. Uh, around the same time, I had just begun for the first time to look at the evidence for and against Jesus' resurrection. And, and I quickly discovered that one of the most common ways skeptics explain the resurrection is as some kind of hallucination. In fact, the psychological literature, literature says that, that when these uh, experiences happen, when people experience hallucinations, they frequently experience, in, experience them around the time of the loss of a loved one, in the wake of the death of a loved one. That made so much sense to me, so much more than a miracle. It, it made so much sense to my philosophy professor, too, who I really uh, uh, admired and, and liked. During um, the, the section we studied on the philosophy of religion, he gave a lecture where he said that the resurrection of Jesus could easily be explained as hallucinations induced by auto-suggestion. As he argued during that lecture, the disciples were so overcome with grief, they so desperately wanted to see Jesus alive again, that their, their minds subconsciously manufactured these hallucinatory visions of Jesus risen from the dead. As he was giving this lecture, for some reason I thought of Paul. Somewhere I remembered reading that Paul had been this fierce and violent persecutor of the early church and that, that what turned him around, what made him a believer, was that he, he thought he had a, 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 a vision of Jesus, that Jesus had truly appeared to him, risen from the dead. So innocently enough, expecting uh, that my professor would have a great answer to this question, I put my hand up and said, what about Paul? Wasn't he an enemy? of the church? How, how could he have a hallucination of Jesus risen from the dead if that's the last thing in the world he wanted to see happen? My professor was completely stumped. He had no good answer to that question. In fact, as he unsuccessfully tried to explain how Paul could have had a, a hallucination of Jesus, he began to stutter. I felt so bad. I wished I had never asked that question. What I didn't realize at the time was I had stepped on a landmine for skeptics. As a zealous enemy of the early church, Paul frustrates skeptics of the resurrection to no end. See, Paul thought of Jesus more like the Antichrist, the false Messiah, than anything else. In no way did Paul want to see Jesus back from the dead. In no way did Paul want to see this rebel blasphemer who he thought was, was justly, justifiably crucified. In no way did Paul want to see him conquering death. In no way was Paul grieving the death of Jesus. In no way was Paul psychologically disposed to have a hallucinatory vision of the risen Jesus. Psychologically, it's extremely unlikely, if not impossible, for Paul to have some kind of altered state of consciousness where he projected some kind of positive vision of Jesus. As is generally acknowledged, these kinds of experiences simply don't work that way. And every other explanation, attempted explanation for, for how Paul could have had a vision of Jesus, like the idea that he eventually started feeling guilty about persecuting the early Christians, and that's what's behind his vision. All those other explanations are riddled with problems. They're completely untenable, as I'll, I'll show in some future blogs. As I've discovered, it turns out my professor wasn't the only one who didn't have a good answer for Paul. The reason that these hallucinations are so often associated with, with people who just lost a loved one is because we so desperately want to see them alive again. And that's what makes Paul so special. His desire not to see Jesus alive again provides us with good evidence, solid evidence, evidence that Skeptics are at a loss to explain that Jesus truly did appear to him risen from the dead. Last week, we commemorated the 18th anniversary of 9-11. 18 years ago, um, we saw uh, the worst of humanity, as, as well as along with the best of humanity. We saw unimaginable evil and breathtaking acts of love and courage. In this world of ours, the way it is, it's impossible to tell what wins out in the end, love or hate. But, but knowing Jesus is risen from the dead 
we can and we do know that in the end, love wins. And it wins in the most glorious of ways. So how would you have answered the question I asked my philosophy professor about Paul? Let me know what you think by going to the Contact EJ page of the Raising Jesus website and leaving your comments there. Also, thank you for liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you haven't had a chance to do so yet, please do that. I truly appreciate all the support everybody's been giving me. Thank you.